Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast. 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Pilares, and a special guest on today's episode, Matt Barrows from The Athletic. Matt, thanks for joining the podcast. Thank you for having me on. How are you feeling about this 49ers team as they get ready to host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday? I am feeling good about it because, um, you know, they look so good in Jacksonville, and um, there's a chance that they're going to be even more healthy uh, for Tampa Bay. And, and that's with Trent Williams primarily. He was a, a full participant in the Thursday practice, which is the, uh, you know, the, the busiest, uh, the most um, important practice of the week. Uh, and he wasn't last week. So that, that suggests that he's um, gotten um, better, that that ankle has gotten better since last week. And he was pretty good in, in the run game last week, too. Um, getting w- well downfield ahead of uh, Christian McCaffrey and uh, Debo Samuel. I think it was the, the pass blocking that was a little bit more difficult for him. He wasn't able to really anchor on that right ankle. Uh, but uh, all indications are that that will be better. I don't know how much better, but better than it was in Jacksonville. And you saw the final score in Jacksonville, so um, that uh, – that bodes well for this weekend. Yeah, we love to hear it. Lindsay, can you bring us up to speed on the latest updates from those team practices? Are there any injuries we should monitor heading into the team's last workout before game day? Yeah, like Matt mentioned, obviously a very positive sign that Trent Williams took the vet day and came back Thursday as a full participant. Um, Really the only two outstanding injuries uh, were to linebacker Demetrius Flanagan Fowles and right tackle Colton McKivitz, who were both limited participants. Obviously, Colton McKivitz has kind of been one that everyone's been monitoring because he is the team's starting right tackle, but um, he got his ankle rolled up on and is experiencing some knee soreness coming out of that Jacksonville Jaguars game. But I do think a good thing that you can take from that is that he has been at practice, albeit in a limited capacity. Um, So I think that always at least signals a chance that They'll be good to go. Uh, We'll obviously get the final injury report headed into the weekend from head coach Kyle Shanahan later this afternoon. But McKivitz has been out there practicing, um, and he was there, like Matt said, on the full padded, full go day on Thursday. So we'll see how his knee knee and his ankle are tracking. Um, But that's probably the injury of most concern for the 49ers. All right. And we'll have all the latest updates for you available on 49ers.com. So be sure to check those out later today. And head coach Kyle Shanahan and the rest of the team has shared that they've seen the Buccaneers play at an extremely high level. Tampa Bay is coming off a win against the Titans heading into this contest. So Matt, can you share what fans should expect from the Buccaneers this Sunday? Yeah, I mean, what they really did a a great job with against the Titans was shutting down Tennessee's running game. Um, Derrick Henry is the number two rusher in the league and uh, had very modest numbers against the Buccaneers. So um, Tampa Bay was uh, definitely focused on doing that, and I'm sure they'll they'll try to do the same against the number one rusher, Christian McCaffrey, in this game. I I think though that um, you know uh, the, the Titans don't have the offensive depth that the 49ers do. They have had a rookie quarterback. They have one good receiver in DeAndre Hopkins. As we all know, the, the 49ers are just. Uh, oozing talent on offense. So I, I think the 49ers will have a lot more answers um, if, if the Buccaneers do try to take out one aspect of their offense. Um, and then uh, as far as the 49ers defense, um, Rashad White, the uh, the Buccaneers running back, they use him as a receiver a lot. And, and that was one weakness in Jacksonville is that the 49ers Still had trouble with the screen game at times uh, on one drive in particular. And uh, I'm sure Tampa Bay saw that and will try to exploit that. And they know that they've got a good running back in White who is um, uh, really terrific as a receiver. So I expect them to, to, to show that. And I, I would expect the 49ers to realize that that's coming. And uh, we'll see on Sunday whether they've uh, been able to remedy that, uh, that persistent problem for them. 
this season. Yeah, yeah. And we had the chance to hear from defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes yesterday as he evaluated the Buccaneers. So, Lindsay, how is he looking at Tampa Bay's offense and what are some of his keys to limiting their production? Yeah, a couple of the players that defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes zeroed in on were, of course, Baker Mayfield. And then we also heard head coach Kyle Shanahan single out Mike Evans, who is a wide receiver that just continues to be dominant. Um, With Baker Mayfield, he's been taking really good care of the football. So I think bringing as much pressure to him to make sure that you force him to make mistakes. And then also just for the secondary to be on their A game, much like we saw in Jacksonville, uh, to exploit any opportunities that might be created from some pressure and some sacks is going to be really important. And like I said, defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes really zeroing in on Mike Evans as a guy who continues to make big plays and has been very productive. Um, So yeah, definitely a guy to be looking out for this weekend. All right. So at the top of the podcast, we talked about how it looks like the 49ers will be going into this matchup looking pretty healthy. So Matt, how does a fully loaded San Francisco offense influence a game especially after what we saw in Jacksonville last week with another 30-plus point game. Well, I mean, if they can continue their formula of uh, scoring first and then forcing a turnover or some three and outs, I mean, that's uh, that, that's worked well for them because uh, it basically forces the opponent to abandon their running game early in the game, um, and that allows the 49ers to really unleash their um, their defensive line, be, be the aggressive defense that they want to. So um, I know that, uh, you know, winning the coin toss is such a, like a, a trivial thing, literally 50-50. But, um, you know, when, when the 49ers do that and they're able to kind of, um, you know, shut down the opposing offense, force a punt, uh, and then get on the board early and then get the, the, the kickoff in the second half, um, that really, uh, you know, is part of their formula and really kind of dictates the game for them. So, um, you know, uh, a, a, an early score, they've been really good at scoring either a touchdown or a field goal on that opening drive. I think in, in all of their wins this year, they've, they've done that. Uh, so I think that's... Uh, that's a key to to winning this game as well. You know, we've seen especially Captain Fred Warner take a lot of pride in that coin toss. So, you know, there is a little bit there with the 49ers. But aside from being at full health, what clicked for the 49ers defense last week for that unit to only allow three points to the Jaguars? They they, uh, came out with that five-man defensive line, which I don't think that the Jaguars were expecting. And uh, when you have five along the defensive line, that's discouraging the run. Uh, so I think that that, you know, right away, and this was a, a real, uh, I thought that this was Steve Wilkes' best game, and that was part of it. Um, he was giving the Jaguars looks uh, that they hadn't seen before. Um, and uh, it confused Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback, and uh, really gave the 49ers an, an advantage. So um, you know, whether they can do the same against Baker Mayfield, he's a little bit more of an, an experienced passer than Trevor Lawrence. I'm not sure whether it's going to be to that degree, but, um, you know, that, that, that defensive line, um, is the key to any victory. And, um, you know, now they've got an extra defensive lineman or, uh, a new defensive lineman in, in Chase Young, um, who's coming off the edge. And I think he was just a, a fantastic compliment to, uh, Nick Bosa in, in his first game, I think he's only going to get better. So uh, I think that that's something to watch. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's something I think uh, Nick Bosa enjoys seeing is Chase Young getting some chip blocks from the opposing tailbacks. Usually those are those are all reserved for uh, Nick Bosa. Uh, and when that's sort of shared between two guys, it means that uh, uh, Bosa has less obstruction on his way to the to the quarterback. Yeah, we'll see how it all plays out this Sunday against the Buccaneers. But before we wrap up this episode, it's Friday, so it's time for some bold predictions. Matt, what is your bold prediction for this Sunday's matchup? Yeah, I'm sort of uh, defensive line obsessed. So I'm going to say that um, <laughs> that both uh, both Bosha and Chase Young get a sack, and it's not a shared sack this time. Um, it's uh, individual sacks for both guys in this game. And Um, I don't think that there's going to be any flag planting celebration like there was the last time they faced uh, Baker Mayfield. (laughs) Um, They've they've sort of hinted that that's not coming, but 
Um, I'd like to see what uh, what Chase Young does when he gets a uh, a solo sack. And Lindsay, what are you calling for in this contest against the Bucks? Um, I also think that Nick Bosa and Chase Young will have individual sacks, but I do think one of them will be another strip sack, and I'm gonna say at least one more interception for the 49ers secondary just because the defense was so dominant in Jacksonville. Exciting. We'll just have to see. So faithful, tune in to the game this Sunday. The week 11 matchup is set to kick off at 1.05 p.m. Pacific time on Sunday, November 19th on Fox. But that will do it for today. Thank you so much, Lindsay and Matt, for joining me in this update. Don't forget to follow First and 10 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Be sure to turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, Faithful, for tuning in.